Hey everyone, um, welcome back to our channel, or if you're new, hello. Um, in a previous video um, where we introduced our son, Bear, um, we talked about, or we kind of mentioned that I would talk about my labor process and especially how it involves my back, um, since I'm kind of a slightly unique situation um, carrying Bear and having him. So in this video, I kind of wanted to talk about that um, process and why my scenario is a little bit different from what other people might experience. So to kind of first set the stage of why um, my labor is a little bit different um, than other people's might be, I actually have scoliosis and was diagnosed back when I was, oh gosh, like 11 or 12 um, and went through processes and doctors to kind of curb my spinal curb um oh and if you don't know what scoliosis is it's curvature of the spine um it just happens it can be genetically passed down um my grandparents on my dad's side actually carried um my grandmother had the scoliosis so um i also had it <laughs> fly <laughs> fly <laughs> so with that said i had a curve of my spine um when i went to doctors and did things um through teenage years all up until 18 and then my curve just progressed to the point where I needed to have back surgery to fix it so that I wouldn't have health issues later on down the road. Um, so my curve is in the lower part of my spine from T11 to L3 um, is about where kind of the curvature happened and when I was 18 I had uh, surgery to correct that curve um, meaning two metal bars screws and some of four of my vertebrae fused together so it was basically one long bone um and everything's stable it's been fine it's been like what 10 or 11 years since that happened um and with that um i have like a little bit of arthritis in two spots my spine but um with that comes carrying baby and having baby so um with labor, part of it is obviously like the epidural portion. If you elect to do that, um, you have an option for an epidural. So going into my labor story, a little about eight days, a week and a day before my actual due date, went in for a checkup with my doctor. Um, she was checking to see how dilated I was and she accidentally snagged my water and made a little tear. So I had a little bit of leaking if you're not familiar, if your water breaks or if any of that is torn or anything, bacteria can be introduced and basically that can be a not great scenario. You need to have the child within a certain time frame if your water breaks. So that kind of pushed us into a non-elected induced situation, which was totally fine. Um, my water probably would have broken that night or next day. Um, so they put us on some monitoring for the baby. Um, we were having some decelerations with my contractions because I was having tiny contractions even though I didn't feel them. But basically it was enough that my doctor was like, mm, you might want to go to the hospital now just so that we can keep monitoring you. Variable decelerations. Variable decelerations. That's the word. So went into the hospital, got checked in and everything, um, and was there for like six hours and like nothing. I was having contractions but I wasn't really feeling them. Um, I was like dilated like three centimeters. It was like nothing crazy. Um, and so then after six hours, we elected to do some Pitocin to kind of help speed things along. Um, did that for several hours and nothing was really happening. Um, so then um, shift change, new doctor came in and he wanted to check to see if I had a four bag with my water so that's where um, it might have since my water did tear it didn't like fully break um, it, the baby's head kind of slipped into a position where it kind of stopped that water so it wasn't like a full kind of go moment um, so he wanted to check it to see if there needed to be more of my water actually ruptured now that we were kind of going through this process turns out there was turns out there was a lot more water <laughs> so um, between that and the Pitocin that they kind of kept increasing it kind of sped things along quickly. Um, and by this time I was having like pretty noticeable contractions, pretty painful um, and everything at like around like eight, 8.30. And um, 
I started to elect like, okay, I want to like approach this like epidural situation um, as an option because I was on a lot of pain. Obviously it's labor. Backing up a little earlier in the day, we had talked to our nurses and doctors and things about like my back situation and how we wanted to talk to an anesthesiologist about it just to like prep them. And we had talked to one guy and he gave us like the options and things. Um, risks and things of trying with my surgery he said that he was totally willing to do it but he had a shift change so then he briefed the next doctor um on everything that we had discussed in the situation um and he was open to trying it as well so um by the time i was in like a lot of pain and wanted to explore this as an option um i had to wait a little bit because the anesthesiologist was with another patient um but then he came in um we saw my back and everything and he he came in and he wanted to try as well um so we tried four different attempts and the tricky thing is about my back so and the surgery that you have to do is because of um where the hardware is and they have to do some filler in there too along your spine and certain things um he had to find a very specific spot where he could get in between not my, just my skin and then there's like a little thin wall and then it's like your spinal cord. And so in between that like skin and that like wall shield is like a gap where you can have your epidural. But mine in most of my back is filled either with like hardware or like some filler um, that's kind of mixed bone and things um, due to my surgery. So he had to find a spot that was open to be able to get the epidural to actually administer and work um and he even said if he even found a spot there are chances that it probably wouldn't even do me any benefit just because of everything that's in my back um so minutes like he came in he tried four times he got one spot on the fourth time um, because normally i mean you can just go straight into somebody's spine and it's fine but because there was so much stuff and obstacles he had to kind of work it a couple times um and hit a nerve kind of he kept kind of hitting a nerve on my right leg so I kept feeling it in my right leg um but he found a spot but by the time we were able to get that start the process of getting um the medicine I was actually in really really fat my contractions were coming really really fast and very very strong um, and only minutes later, I had to really start pushing. So we're not even really sure if the epidural actually was able, technically it probably wasn't even on board really by the time I had to start pushing. Um, and, um, at that time I was pushing, I only had to push for like 10 minutes. So it was very, very quickly. Everything happened very, very fast from the time I was like five centimeters to 10 and trying to get an epidural not having it come really on board um, and to pushing only like 10 minutes, which was amazing um, and great. But um, yeah, everything went really, really fast. But um, yeah, it was a little tricky with, with my back. And that's something that if um, you have back surgery or have like, especially hardware, that's what they're really worried about is like the hardware and damaging that and everything with epidurals or anything like that. Um, and just know that maybe mentally prepare that you might not be able to have an epidural or know that your other options for pain mitigation and, um, everything like that, because it might not happen or it might happen, but it might not necessarily work. But if you do have stuff and had back surgery or have things in your back and everything, don't worry. He was able to find a spot in my spine and it was able to work. It just didn't get on board by the time that I really needed it. Um, it probably helped me in post delivery, but um, there, they might be able to try. So there is always that option and it might succeed. You never know, but um, just always kind of mentally preparing for whatever scenario you might have. Um, but yeah, I was very fortunate that my delivery was very, very fast um, and pushing was very, very fast and um, yeah, it kind of worked out for me. I was a little worried. Um, I definitely was worried about not having um, one of kind of the main pain pain mitigators that most women turn to if they want to or they need to or 
what have you. Um, I was worried about that, but um, turns out I was just fine not even really having it on board. Um, and you can, you can do it, you can make it through. But if you need to have it, don't worry. And if it doesn't work out and you end up not being able to, you'll be just fine too. So yeah, I just wanted to share kind of my story, um, a little bit about with my back scenario. If anyone has any questions or anything, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, happy to help answer because I know it's kind of scary or weird or things that you have in your back and you're like, how is my back going to be able to handle this and everything? Um, so happy to help out if anyone has any questions. Thanks for watching. Whoa! Don't know what just happened there, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, just act like that didn't happen. <laughs> okay. Hold on, let me fix that. Oh. I feel like I'm about to have a heart attack because our really nice camera almost just like plummeted. Um, but thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> what did you even do? I was trying to turn it on the bear. Oh. There's the bear. Sleeping, per usual. He's cute.